pesca tayo. Nung unang pesca siya natin, sinabi ko sa inyo na kailangan natin mag-library for or somehow a library-based research. Di ba, class? Kasi sabi ko, okay, pinapayaran ninyo yung library. Nakita mo ba kung magkano ang library fees? Pagkutin na ninyo, class, malaki ang library fee natin. Kasi, class, sa totoo lang, meron tayong mga subscription na magagamit nyo sa pagtilisis at magagamit nyo sa ibang research ko. Kasi, dalawang minggo tayo hindi makikita sa Sabado. Kaya naman, maya-maya ng kaunti, ibibigay ko na ang unang library group work ninyo topic ng bawat isa. Okay? Na, ang gagawin natin, pupunta tayo sa library natin dyan sa fourth floor. Hindi kayo kasi mag-discuss pa ako. In one of these days na may pasok kayo dito. Okay? Alam nyo pa na meron din tayong e-library na kahit hindi kayo pumasok sa library, pwede nyo ma-access ang library natin. Okay? Do you already have the passwords sa inyong library? No! no. no. Kung wala kayong passwords, so siguro magpa-password na kayo or else, pupunta tayo sa library. Anyway, lahat pa ng klase nyo ay may face-to-face na. Oh, oh. Most of the time, hari ko kayo. Yan lang pala. So, pwede tayo pumunta ng library at a time. Kaya naman, sisimulan na natin ang lesson sa laboratory. Isarado na ang lecture para malaman natin mamaya kung ano ang ipapa-research ko sa library. Isarado na muna ang lecture. Okay, yes. Ano The group that I sent in your, okay, so in your orange apps, yun yung grouping nyo, okay? Yes. Ah, sige. Let us now continue our discussion about the laboratory. Okay, wala itong computation class. Itong isang to, wala ng computation. Pero, mamaya malalaman natin. Ah, sige. Ipinagpalit ko ang computation sa memory stage ko. Okay. Ah, sige. So, let us just continue our discussion about the language of analytical chemistry. Ito yung mga bagay na dapat natin malaman sa pagkakay kumukuha ng analytical chemistry na subject ko. Okay, we have this... Ay, 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 laboratory na. We have discussed what analyte is as well as the matrix. We have discussed the different, the, the different techniques in analytical chemistry. So we have there the total and the instrumental analysis or technique. We have there is the different selection of methods. We have defined selectivity as well as calibration and standardization. Next, or on February 17, we will be dealing with standardization. My computation yun, huh? Okay, so later on, so you will know about it, okay? And then we have set validation. So, and using all of this, we were able to develop protocols. Sabi natin, you as medical technologies class, no? Hindi nyo kailangan maraming sample na kukunin sa inyong pasyente. Baka mamatay ang pasyente nyo sa kasa sample nyo. What you are doing in your labor library, laboratory, is actually already a protocol. Dumaan na sa masusing pag-aaral at napatunayan na, kaya pwedeng isang sampling na lang. Ano po? Yan na. Okay. So that is a protocol. And then we have this case, okay, so how some statistical methods can be used to determine the validity of our results, okay? From that, we were able to compute for the percent error, no? Okay, so which will tell us whether our accuracy is high, moderate, or low. Diba, class? So, class, we have solved so some equations or some problems regarding this statistical data. And then we have discussed, no, so the different measures of spread, okay? And then later on, so we have discussed... I think we haven't discussed this yet, no? Okay, sige. Listen. Class, meron tayong dalawang uri ng error. Remember, we computed for error. Hindi naman may iwas ang class talaga magkaroon ng error, no? Talagang gano'n. Minsan, may error. Perfection is boring. Hindi nyo mabe-perfect yan, no? May error at may error pa rin yan. Pero, 
Pero, as much as possible, dapat, ang error natin, as minimal as possible. Ano po? Okay, so dapat minimal lang ang error natin. So dapat, less than 1%. Maliwanag po. At yan ang i-achieve natin sa unang experiment natin. Dapat less than 1% ang error. Kasi kung more than 1% ang error, okay, so expect mababa ang grades ninyo. Maliwanag po. Okay, sige. Okay, so for us to be able to minimize the error, sige, discuss nga natin yung error na yan. Saan ba nang gagaling ang error na yan? No? Meron tayong dalawang classification ng error, kaya lang wala dito yung uh, determination. So, I guess there is still, no? Okay. Meron tayong tinatawag na determinate error at meron tayong tinatawag na indeterminate error, no? Okay, from the term themselves, no? Determinate, so we can determine, so we can know what those errors are. We can determine where they are coming from, no? Okay, so kasi it is controllable, no? Okay, so you can actually control it, okay? So such example of determinate errors are some claim, method, measurement, and personal error. In, in, in all of these examples of determinate error, ang pinakakaraniwang pinagagalingan is yung personal error. Kayo, Kasi, oo, oh, oh, kayo yung mali. Kasi naman, ang sabi, gumamit ng pipet, pero kayo, gagamit kayo ng beaker. O gumamit ng graduated cylinder, gagamitin yung beaker. That is a personal error. That is okay, an error so that we can eliminate. Pwede natin eliminate yun. And that is what we meant by determinate error. Is that clear? Yes. It could also be from your sampling. Halimbawa, pinakukulekta ko kayo ng urine. Okay? Ang ginawa nyo, unang umihi pa lang yun na sinahog nyo na. Error. Meron tayong sampling protocol for extraction of urine, lalo na blood. Di ba, class? Yes. Okay. O, yung iba, pinakukulekta ko ng semen. Nakuha. Okay. So, anong gato? No? Okay. So, dapat, when it comes to sampling, we have to stick with the protocol, ha? Determinate error can actually be eliminated. So, ito yung error na pwede natin matanggal. Ito yung error na pwede, kung di man, so, di man ma-zero, at least we can put it into the most minimum amount. Is that clear? Yan yung sinasabing determinate error. However, 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 okay. Meron pang another type of error, so which is called as indeterminate. Wala yata ko yun. Ano yun? Wala yung crisis error, may papakita ko. Ano yun? Huwag niyo akong picture na nag-ano. Huwag niyo akong picture na nakaranga. But anyway, sige. But I will just discuss here. Okay. Ah, yung papala. And the other one is indeterminate, no? Okay, so again, we have to General classifications of errors, determinate and indeterminate, no? Okay. So, ang sabi, okay? So, this is characterized by random variation of magnitude and direction, no? And this can be traced in several sources such as a, a collection of sample, manipulation of samples during analysis and making of measurements. Listen. Itong indeterminate error ang medyo mas pahirap iwasan. Kasi minsan, nasun nato na mismo sa machine na ginagamit ninyo ang error. Okay? So minsan, pagka bagong manufacture ang machine, mataas pa ang kanyang accuracy. However, minsan, pag tumatanda na ang machine, okay? So bumababa, bumababa na ang accuracy. And therefore, ang sabi, pagka kayo, lalo na in your field, no? Yung mga machine nyo sa dapat, okay? So, sinusunod natin ang useful life niya. Last, 
Bago isang machine, I use ko like that. So usually seven years, no? Usually seven, seven years, 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 okay? Ang use ko like niya, no? Kaya naman, as you could see, we already purchased the new centrifuge. Kasi yung, yung luma natin centrifuge ngayon, okay, so it's actually seven years na siya, no? Okay, so that is why we have new, we have new uh, water bag, and we have new open, okay? Kasi itong open na ito, so medyo... More, and then six years pa lang to kasi naputang ko to. Wow. Okay, so ayun. So actually, pas, ayun, yun yung medyo ang pang open natin. No? So yun yung pagsa seven years na, no? Wow. Okay. So yung autoclave natin, ito actually, yung lumang autoclave na yan, okay? Ayun, yun na yung bago, yung malaki, no? Okay, so kaya binago na yung class, no? So that is because we cannot, no? Okay, we cannot, okay? So minimize, okay? So to the... Oh, we cannot no? so remove completely indeterminate errors, okay? Ah, sige, kaya ang machine natin, bumibili kami ng bago, nakita nyo naman. Nakagulan nyo, nung ating uh, uh, spectros, uh, yung may kaping pang kulay blue, no? Bagong-bago yung class, no? So that is because we don't want as much as possible indeterminate error to occur when you are analyzing because you are doing analysis of body fluids or body samples, okay? Pwede ito man ay pagmaraming error yan. Maliwanag ko, okay, so that is indeterminate error, no? We have discussed what precision is, no? Okay, kung ang nakuha natin result, talapit-lapit, then that means you are precise, okay? However, we still have two different types of precision. One is what we call as repeatability, and the other one is reproducibility, no? Okay, this is it. Ang sabi ko na ito, repeatability, no? Okay, so, if, say for example, ikaw pinag-analyze ko, say for example, na nakuha mo one, at siya rin pinag-analyze ko, okay, at ang nakuha rin niya kayo ito, okay? Ibig sabihin, ang procedure na ginawa natin ay repeatable. Because from one person to another, we got the same result. Repeatable. Is that clear? And when we speak of reproducibility, okay, is a sharp precision okay, of when under any other set of conditions, including the between analysts or between sessions for a single analyst. No? Okay, halimbawa, ako nag-analyze ng urine. Nag-analyze halimbawa ako ng albumin alas 8 ng umaga. Mayamaya, nag-analyze ulit ako ng albumin, the same sample at nakakuha ko ng the same result, okay? So that means what I did, or the procedure I follow is reproducible, reproducible. Is that clear? That is the difference between repeatable and reproducible. Malimana po. And those are the two types of precision. Yes. So you have repeatability. So parang sabay ginawa kasi yung ano? Yes, in between two. Ah, uh, so kung pagkibang analyst ka yun, no? Okay, so yet nakuha mo same. yung same result as you say. Kasi sa ito, 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 for as long as, okay, so yung pet hour yung nakuha will have the same, almost the same result, so that is the reproducible, no? Okay, so same, so that is repeatability and reproducibility. Ah, okay, now this is... So although we will not be looking at this, kasi class, in analytical chemistry, no? Okay, so... We cannot, no? Okay, we cannot perform an null hypothesis, okay? So, pag sinabi natin null hypothesis, no? Is that the indeterminate error is sufficient to explain any difference in the values being compared, no? Alisay. Sa gagawin natin, kailangan eksakto lang eh. No? Hindi kayo pwede mag-hypothesize ng basta-basta, okay? And that will have to prove, no? Yes. Okay. So, in our experiments, no? Okay, so we will not, okay, take into consideration the hypothesis, but instead, we will, okay, we will compute for it. We will determine everything in the laboratory. 
Okay, pero, pagka kayo magpipisis, sensitive yun pa naman na patunayan, no? kung ano yung hinahanap nyo, okay? You can formulate a non-hypothesis, okay? So, pero, dito, exact ba yung tayo? So, this is exact. We will do what is on the procedure, okay? So, wala ko na tayo ganyan. So, kaya hindi ko siya masyadong inidisas. Listen! Minsan, lalo na pag nagtitisis kayo, may mga makukuha kayo na halos pare-parehas ang value nila. So, say for example, 0.1, 0.099, 0.11. Tapos biglang nagkaroon ng 1.5. Say for example, pwede ba napakalayo niya kumpara doon sa ibang results ninyo? No? Plus that happens every time. May isang resulta na napakalayo sa ibang resulta. Okay? And, in case, ay, nakikinig ba? In case na meron tayong ganung resulta, lalo na sa experiment number one, then it could be an outlier. Okay? Sa experiment number one, tatlong trials ang gagawin nyo. Okay? Pag isa sa kanila ay napakalayo ng resulta kung para doon sa dalawa, mga ibot iha ulitin nyo na yan. So, because that is an outlier. Okay? An outlier is something that you cannot exclusively or conclusively okay, write down in your in your table no? or in your solution. Okay? So, that is because it is outlier. It could be, okay, so it could be something from your error, no? Okay. So, baka masyadong mataas ang personal error nyo baka masyadong mataas ang sampling error. Okay? Uh, again, tatlong trial ang gagawin natin sa experiment 1. Pag doon sa tatlong trial at meron napakalayo doon sa dalawang trials nyo, ulitin nyo na. Okay? Yes. Yung trial na outlier. Maliwanan po? Okay. However, listen. Minsan, yung mga outlier will give us okay, kung ano yung mga pwede na commit natin na error. Okay? Kaya minsan, you also have to look at it and learn from it. Bakit kaya? No? Okay. Kasi, once na inulit nyo ang outlier at ang nakuha nyo pa rin ganon, sa so, insa rin hindi nyo no, inulit na mabuti. Maliwanag ko. Okay, ibig sabihin, you committed the same mistake. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Okay. At hindi pwede yung ganun, lalo na sa pag-ibig class, di ba? Okay, when it comes to sampling class, are you okay? Okay. Huwag masyadong marikita. When it comes to sampling class, again, no? Okay, so you have your standard sampling methods, no? Nag-start na ba kayo mag-discuss? Okay, na extraction of blood? Yes! Na-discuss yun na yung proper sampling? Yes. Okay. Ano pa ba? Okay, so, pero there is a proper way of doing it. When when I say sampling, the proper way. Yun yung tinutupi ito, ha? Okay. Pwede bang kumuha dito? Dito ha? Pwede bang kumuha? Dito ha? Pwede bang kumuha? Pwede! Pwede! that sampling class, ha? Okay. Okay. Whatever is the procedure you have in your PLMS, no? or PMS, no? we will also consider that in our sampling no? when it comes to body fluids. Okay, now listen. In our qualitative analysis, or our qualitative chemistry experiments, okay, so please take note, that we will be dealing with semi-microanalysis. Okay? Dito lang muna tayo, class. Kasi, the sample size that we will be analyzing range from 0.1 to 0.01 to 0.1 gram. Medyo maliit pa lang, no? Okay. However, as you go higher, Okay? 
your clinical chemistry and other subject, you might perform a macro analysis involving higher than 0.1 gram or class ito pinaperform niya ha micro at ultra micro analysis kaya hindi ko lang bakit ako nasa yung micro pipette natin dito parang para may nag-uwi ng micro pipette huwag kayo mag-uwi ng micro pipette kapag ka mahal mahal ng 25,000 isang impress ha so that is why you have that no okay so because you will be dealing with micro analysis and ultra micro analysis in the future take note of the amount of the samples required in each type of analysis. Tinatanong ko yan sa class, ha? Tinatanong ko sa test yung class, ha? Okay. So then we also have there the constituent types. Okay. Yes. Listen to this. When it comes to constituent types naman, eto yung ating types of constituents. If your constituent, pag sabi kong constituent, sir, across, uh, it means analyte, no? Okay. If the analyte or the constituent, okay, is around 1 to 100% of your sample, then it is considered to be a major constituent, no? Water is a major constituent of our body, no? Okay, so because there is a great amount of water inside our body, no? Okay. How about... Protein in blood, no? Okay, so it's more than 1% Okay? And then the minor constituent, if the analyte, if the constituent is just between 0.01 to 1%, so then that means it is a minor constituent, no? Okay, so sa katawan natin, di ba kailangan natin ng zinc? Para sa ng zinc? Para sa, ano, katawan. Para sa, this boosts up the immune system, di ba? It helps boost up the immune system, no? Kaya lang ang zinc pala is trace constituent lang ang zinc, no? So trace lang ang kailangan nyo. Between 1 ppb to 1 to 100 ppm, no? Okay. So ano pa ba yung mag-cocorn ang the minor constituent, no? Okay, so... Sa katawan natin, minor constituent... Potasyo. Potasyum na is ganito. Marita ka potasyum kasi, no? Okay, so ano bang minor constituent sa katawa natin? Okay, so... O, basta yun. So, pag nag-pull lang siya, okay, na 0.01 to 1%, so that is just a minor constituent, no? Okay, so doon sa kinakain na lang, no? Okay, di ba yung pechin, no? Okay, inilalagay natin yung pechin sa kinakain. So, minor constituent ng pechin kasi usually, it will fall under this percentage. No? Okay. Sige. So, trace constituent, pagka ganito lang, and lower than 1 ppb, ppb means parts per billion, 1 over 1 billion ang ibig sabihin lang, no? Okay, so that is an ultra-trace constituent. Okay. Sigles, more than some, more than something to class, no? More of something. Okay. As it is. So, let us see. Okay. Hindi na natin ito para pag-aralan ka kasi alam na natin yung sampling kasi yung more on sampling tayo sa katawan. Okay. Listen. Plus take note, whenever we are sampling, we have to take a representative sample of the entire, no? Of the entire population. Okay? Ito, the reason why kung bakit dito kayo kumukuha ng blood is because, no? Okay. So, na dyan, okay? So, na dyan yung representative sample ng blood ninyo, no? Okay. So, yan. Yan ang representative sample ng blood ninyo. So, kasi, pag kumuha kayo nung malapit sa puso, no? Okay. Di ba kapag pump lang niya ng oxygen, no? Kakakalo lang ng oxygen. Okay. So, that means pataas pa yung oxygen concentration no? Okay. Pagka na ito, nasa dulo ng paano kung walang sample, eh baka mababa ng oxygen niya kasi kung, at pumunta na sa ibang bahay ng katawan, no? Okay, so that is the reason why kung bakit dito rin, no? Isa sa dahil lang kung bakit. So it's because, no, it is the representative sample of the blood. Is that clear? Okay. Sige, so what else are here? Okay. 
which is shortened or abbreviated as KHP. Okay? Ito ang gagamitin natin standard para nalaman natin kung ano ang actual concentration na titimplahin ninyong sodium hydroxide solution. Ano po? So the reason why we are using potassium hydrogen phthalate as our standard is because it has no purity and also it is suitable for long storage. Is that clear? Okay. Ang karakteristik kasi ng potassium hydrogen phthalate, hindi siya nag-react sa air. Kaya kahit ispore mo siya, mapasukan man ng air ang lalagyan niya, yun pa rin siya. Yun nga lang, yun nga lang, yun nga lang. Okay? So minsan, yung water in the atmosphere, minsan tumitikit sa kanya. Kaya, on our first experiment, we will first put in an oven the potassium hydrogen phthalate. Yung oven muna natin for one hour just to make sure to expel water molecules in it. Is that clear? Yes, But other than water, okay, wag kayong mag-alala, okay? Okay, so pwede siyang store kahit sa akin. Okay, so then we have there the secondary standard. So the concentration determined relative to the primary standard. Okay, he said. May mga pagkakataon na pag natapos natin magamit ang potassium hydrogen talay, yung na-standardize natin sa kanya, pwede na natin magamit pang-analyze ng iba pang chemicals or solution, katulad ng HCl. Yung mga solution na na-analyze na natin, using the primary standard can now act as a standard for other solution. And in that case, that means the sodium hydroxide that we have standardized against AHP is your secondary standard. Maliwanag po, pag na-standardize nyo na yung primary standard, pwede nyo siya gamitin pag standardize ang iba pang solution, katulad ng hydrochloric acid, and that becomes a secondary standard. Yes, no? Okay. So kung halimbawa ako, pari ako, pinatawad kita, pwede ka na magpatawad sa isa. Ako ang primary, ito ang secondary. Okay. Pwede tayong nung tinatawag natin ang blank 
corrections. Okay? Halimbawa, pinagtututaan nyo yung inyong resulta. O sige, para mawalaan duda natin, kung dinakakala ninyo na yung distilled water na nagamit nyo ay contaminated with chemicals, then we can, we can produce or perform blank corrections. No? In which, yung pinagtututaan yung distilled water, i-analyze nyo siya without other chemicals using the same method na ginamit nyo. Okay? Pag meron kayong reading sa distilled water ninyo, so that is considered to be a blank correction, any reading that you can get from your distilled water must be subtracted from the result that you get. And from that, so you were able to remove error. Did you get it? Yes. Kasi may narig kayo. Supposedly, wala namang maririg sa distilled water. Pero may narig kayo. May nabasa kayo. May na-analyze kayo. So that is the proof that your distilled water is contaminated. Did you get it? Yes. And therefore, whatever, whatever amount you get from your blood collection, so that must be substituted, no? or that must be subtracted from the result that you get. So that is the importance of blank correction. Maliwanag po? Okay, sige. Darating tayo sa puntong ganyan class. Okay, na kung saan, para mawala ang mga error na yan, or mabawasan man lang, we will perform blank analysis. I guess that is an experiment number seven, no? Magpa-blank analysis tayo. Pati yung mga tubig na gagamitin natin, i-analyze natin. Ano po? So that is the importance of blank correction. Okay, the last page. Nanasabi ko na kanina. We will be using this one as primary and this one as our secondary. Okay, so during the standardization of those solutions that you will be producing in the laboratory. Ano po? Okay. The next topic of our line laboratory, no? Okay. Has something to do with this, no? Okay. We will discuss quantitative, quantitative procedures in the laboratory sa susunod, okay? After experiment number one. Kasi, okay, so importante yung bago natin i-perform ang experiment tungkol sa quantitative analysis. Now, since dalawang linggo tayong hindi magkikita, wala tayong klase na February 10. Pero may klase tayo ng Tuesday, ha? Walang cancellation ng Tuesday. Okay. For your first library work, kung punta kayo sa library dyan, or kung meron na kayong password sa e-library, okay, kung kuha kayo ng any analytical chemistry book, mas maganda sana kung qualitative ang makikita. May nakita ko dyan qualitative analysis. No? Okay. Now, listen. Kung wala kayong nakita, Una, unang option natin is mga libro or references sa library. Pag wala kayong nakita, so that is the only time you will use the internet. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Pero chinek ko ang lista ng mga analytical chemistry, uh, analytical chemistry book sa library natin. Ito yung nakita ko. Meron. No? Okay. As you can see the format, in the format, definition of terms. Ano ang may mga terms na nakikita sa determination na limbawa ng lipids. Halimbawa sa file of qualitative determination, uunahin yung i-define bawat isa. Is that clear? Para pagdating sa discussion, smooth. No? Pag nagbanggit nyo, yung i-define yung terms at least alam mo na. So pagdating sa discussion at topic, okay, kung ano na yung makita nyo, halimbawa sa file of qualitative determination, una ganito, pangalawa ganon, pangapat ganon. Is that clear? Okay. And then, sa pangatlo, the third one is I would like to see the references. 
Okay? Again, pag pumunta kayo ng library at wala kayong nakita, ilagay nyo pa rin kung kailan kayo pumunta at anong oras kayo pumunta. Is that clear? Titignan ko yung mga login kung talagang nagpunta kayo. Ano pa? Okay. So, kung wala talagang makita, that is the only time so where you will use internet. No? Lahat ito nasa internet naman. But I would like to see your references. Maximum lang naman ang 10 pages ka. So, huwag na mag-11 page na. Kasama na yung title page to sa 10. Eh, baka naman yung pages lang. Title page at saka yung inyong research. Ano pa? Okay, sige. There you have for group 1, group 2, group 3. Did you get that? Hindi na kami ito sa inyo po. Gusto nyo ba yung mahal? Gusto nyo? Bakit isang group po lahat gusto nyo? Okay, ako dun. Okay. Group 1, group 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Isa-isa lang. At sa kung isang sabihin nyo sa akin, gusto nyo lahat sa inyo. Okay. By group ito kasabay. Okay. Oh, yeah, we...